Howdy, everyone. Okay, so um, this might be a little bit of a lengthy video. We'll see how much uh, yapping I actually do, but I wanted to go over a few of the things that I've been checking and double checking just to give you an overview of how this uh, system is coming together and specifically a little bit more detail on how, on how the VPX Pro operates. So like I talked about in my last video, I had hooched my instrument panel and I had this, uh, this control here for the ELT in, a, in the wrong location. It wouldn't fit. So I went ahead and covered up that hole with this plate. It looks like crap. I'm not a fan, but there it is. Um, it's held in place with two flush rivets. Uh, in theory, when this gets painted, hopefully that will blend in. A little bit better when it's all painted but we'll see not too concerned it's not uh, what I would like to have happened obviously but you can see that uh, here is where I will be putting my uh, USB charger and this hole here is was for a, uh, a knob and you can see there's quite a gap between these two so I'm definitely going to mount something here on this plate but I'm not sure at the moment what it's going to be. I know that I have a warning light that I need to put on the panel somewhere. I may put it here. Like I said, it's going to kind of be out of place if I do that. But it's not a big deal. There's a possibility there's something that I'm forgetting. There might be something I'm overlooking. There might be something I haven't gotten to yet. So there may be something else I, I could have an opportunity to mount here, but I'm not sure. So for now, I'm just going to leave it a solid plate. Eventually, I'll put a hole in it for something. So you can see I've got the uh, the control for the ELT remounted. Of course, it's not bolted in place, but it's it's physically in place. And you can see that I've got the uh, EFIS powered up, which is no big deal. I've had power to this for quite a while now. So that's pretty much what I had done yesterday. I got this fixed. And I got that in place, and I've worked on the ELT. Um, like I had said, it, I wanted to run a um, an RS-232 um, signal to the ELT from my GPS, but I had used my, I thought I had used my GPS um, outputs um, at di a different, a lot higher baud rates for some of my other um, components. The ELT runs at 9600 baud, and the ports available for the uh, GPS are set at a higher rate than that because they're tied into other equipment. So I couldn't wire directly into my GPS. So I was pulling my hair out trying to figure out what to do next and um, I had a hunch about something that I could do but I wasn't sure so I sent uh, a te or a uh, email to the GRT support crew and long story short um, they straightened me out pretty quick. They said that um, as long as I have ports available on the EFIS, which I have plenty, they said I can just wire to the EFIS directly and then in the programming I can set up that particular serial port for 9600 baud and then set that to autopilot whatever it is the NEMA 1803 whatever I don't remember what the number is so that took like 10 seconds um, I removed the wire from the GPS and I moved it over to the EFIS, plugged it into serial port. I think it was serial port number two. And then I went into the EFIS, went into the programming, set it to 96, set it to whatever GRT recommended that, autopilot, NEMA, whatever it is, 1803. And it worked. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I have my test light here this is just an led on a resistor this is talked about in the uh the manual for the elt you run a little pigtail off of your connector your elt connector and you you attach this this led to to verify that you are getting gps signal to the elt i just ran a longer wire from the pigtail up to here where i can reach it from outside the airplane because i got 
I spent a lot of time yesterday crawling up into the airplane and then crawling back underneath here so I can get to that pigtail. So I just ran a line from it out here so I can get to it easily. So now if I ground this wire, you'll see the, well, I don't know if you'll see it or not. Let's see if this will show it, but the, the, the LED is in fact flashing. It's very faint. It is very, very faint. And of course it's not in focus, so that doesn't help. But anywho, it, uh, it is working. I'm pleased with that. It was a very, very simple solution. And like I said before, the more that I do that kind of thing the more that something is explained to me and it, it starts to click a little bit in my head and i i'm really starting to understand serial ports and and how to program them and things of that nature so so far so good the other thing that i wanted to go over i've done this before um, but i'm just going back through and verifying that the different systems are working the way that i think they should be working so um Basically, what I had done last night was I turned off all the main power and I just let the I left the EFIS on solely using the backup power supply. And of course, that verified that the backup power supply is supplying power. Now, when I um, I left it and when the backup power supply got down to a low enough voltage, the EFIS went ahead and turned off. So when I came in here this morning. I turned on main power. You have to have power on for the uh, backup power supply to charge. So I turned on my uh, DC power supply, turned on my um, backup power supply, and you can physically tell that it is charging because it's warm. It's ever so slightly warm. And if I come to the EFIS and I bring up my VPX page, you might be able to see, where is it? I have my, my glasses on so I can see the tiny screen on the camera, which makes anything else in the distance hard to see. Oh, where are you? There it is, IBBS. You can see it's drawn 1.6 amps. So it is uh, charging as it should. So now, Main power is on, the backup battery is also on, and I'm going to turn off main power and the EFIS should stay on. When I do that, you'll see up here I've got a couple of, um, a couple of items that are not communicating with the EFIS, and that's okay because I have those not connected at the moment, so that's the way they should be. When I turn off main power, you're going to see new alerts show up up here. And that's because the backup power supply does not power the entire panel. It only powers the couple of three items that I have connected to it. One of them is the EFIS. So once I turn off main power, I'm going to get warnings up here just letting me know that other components are, are going offline. So I'll turn off main power. The EFIS stays on. And here come the warnings at the very top. Just let me know that other components are going offline. So that is working as it should. Now when I turn the main power back on, those warnings will go away. Here comes main power. And as it spools up, those will disappear. All right, so that's working the way it should. Now, I don't have any actual switches connected yet, so to turn my um, backup power supply on and off, I just got the switch wire connected to ground through a Clico. So let me, um, in effect, disconnect the backup power and the um, EFA should stay on because it's directly connected to the main power. So I just connected, I just disconnected the backup power and of course the EFIS stays on. Okay, so that's all working as it should. 
which makes me quite pleased. But uh, that's nothing new. I'd already trouble. I, I went through the trouble of verifying that way back when I first installed all this. So the other thing that this uh, VPX will do, if I go to the VPX page, here are all the items that I've so far have programmed to the VPX, although not all of them are um, powered. So you can see here's my list, and this nomenclature you manipulate through your laptop. When you have your Ethernet cable connected to the Ethernet port on the uh, VPX, and you have the software, the VPX software downloaded onto your laptop or whatever you're going to use to do the programming, you can go into that software and name all your components, whatever you want to call them. So you'll notice that a few of these items have the initials AO next to them, and that just means always on. So these items that have AO next to them, they are always on. In other words, they are hot wired. There are no switches involved. When you turn on main power, those are powered. And those are items such as the Ethos, um, my uh, transponder, my comm radio, my um, GPS, the uh, backup power supply, the other backup power supply, um, not the other backup power supply, but both um, backup power supply circuits. ELT is always on. Um, this other Safefly Echo is the uh, GPS and then the uh, Limo connector for the headsets. So there are no switches for those. So those are always on, and I, I made a note of that by putting the AO in parentheses. So when I look at this screen, I don't have to try to figure out which items are on a switch and which ones are hot-wired. I can just see that as a glance. So the, the other nice thing with this is, like I said, you can see in the panel, I don't have any switches connected. There aren't any switches even in the panel. But the VPX has its own internal switching, so you can control components with a hard mechanical, a hardwired mechanical switch, or through the software on the VPX. So, as an example, you can see where I have. Where are they? Where is my? You can see I have autopilot servo, and the light is off. There is no AO next to it, so that means that the autopilot is not always on. The autopilot servos are on a switch. Again, I have no switches. However, I can turn the autopilot servos on through the VPX software. So I'm going to go down here, using the knob, I'm going to go down here to autopilot servo, and I'm going to go over to here where it says on, and you'll see the autopilot servo green light come on. So I just turned down the power to the autopilot servo. Now to verify that, let me go back out, and I'll go into the menu, and I'll go down here to where it says autopilot maintenance. And then I can go down, I'm going to do the pitch servo because I don't have my roll servo connected. Let me see now, where, where am I looking here? Give me a second, I got to find out where I'm supposed to be. I don't, is it? No, it's not that one. I'm sorry, I, I forgot where I'm supposed to look here because I'm an idiot. Oh, wasting time. Oh, I'm an idiot. It's right here. So I'll go to pitch servo direction. And then I can run a direction test. So I'm going to hit yes to run the test. And you'll see my servo back there doing its thing. Okay. So now if I get out of here, I go back to my VPX page. 
I'll go back to the autopilot servo power and I'll turn that light off there the autopilot servo light is off which means power is now disconnected I'll go back into the menu go back into autopilot maintenance still on pitch servo direction and I'll run the test nothing happens because there is no power so that's just something um, that I learned I, it's been a little while I mean I've known about it for a while but I just wanted to demonstrate that it's it's a nice redundancy that if you're in flight and you have you know you're coming in for landing at night and your landing light switch isn't working you can't get your landing lights to come on you can't get your taxi lights to come on any any mechanical switch that is wired through the VPX you can manipulate the VPX through its software so like I said if you're coming in for a landing at night you go to flip on your landing lights nothing happens it's no big deal you just come into your VPX page Find your landing light switch, or find your landing lights. Where are they? There's nav position, taxi, landing lights. You can just come in here and say, I want them on. So it's kind of cool. I don't know anything about any of the other uh, EFISs out there. I know nothing about um, Garmin and and uh, the other ones, G this G. Uh, GRT EFIS is the only one I'm familiar with. I don't know if they have anything like that in the actual EFIS themselves. Uh, like I said, this is all VPX stuff. But I, I like that. I, I like the redundancy. If, if my mechanical switches fail, I can go through the EFIS into the VPX and turn things on and off using the software. So, okay, so we verified main power, we verified the backup battery, we verified that it charges, um, we verified the ELT is up and running, and I'm getting the uh, RS-232-96 baud signal from a GPS unit, and I verified the actual ELT with a handheld radio. I went ahead and activated it and did a test and all that, and, and all that worked out fine. So... Quite pleased. Um, things are coming together. Next up will be um, more wiring. I'm going to start, I think I might start populating the panel with actual switches. And rather than making connections through a Clico, I'm going to go ahead and start actually wiring the switches. And I'll get into that a little bit um, because the VPX is a little bit different in that, like I had mentioned before, there, there isn't any power that runs through your mechanical switches. All your mechanical switch does is connect and disconnect ground. So it just, when you turn a switch on, it just grounds a contact inside of the VPX, and then the VPX will turn on whatever that ground is connected to. And I believe I talked about that a little bit in the, in the programming. You run all your power to your components from the VPX, and then you run your, your switch ground, if you will, to the VPX, and you can tell which power circuit you want the individual switches to control. And that's all done through the software. So if you're using a lighted switch that I am, all my switches are going to be lighted or lit. Well, I don't know lighted switches, lit switch, whichever, my switches are going to light up. You have to run separate wires for the light on the switch and then your ground wires to actually have the switch work on and off. And I'll get into that when I actually start wiring the switches. And the VPX requires a diode in that circuit. So I need to run a positive and a negative to the switch so that the light lights up and that positive lead has to be run through a diode. And then I've got my ground wire that will come off of the switch to the VPX to actually tell the VPX if the switch is on or off. And I'll get into that when I actually get into the switching. So I think that's it for now. I think um, 
I'll go ahead and dive into maybe trying to populate this panel a little bit more with um, with some switches and lights and stuff like that and, and start making sure that the switches light up and the switches can in fact control the VPX and I can in fact program which switch to which circuit. All right. So again, a kind of a long video. It's slightly over 20 minutes in length, but I just wanted to go over a few things and uh, I wanted to uh, give you guys a video with a little bit more substance to it this time around rather than just a four or five minute filler. So as always, thanks for stopping in. Thanks for hanging in there through these uh, videos. I appreciate the feedback. And, uh, oh yeah, one last thing. So I'm going to make a video to talk about the GRT support. I was going to get into that with, in this video, but like I said, this is already pushing 21 minutes. So I'm going to make a, a video about my interactions with GRT support in the very near future. All right, thanks for stopping in. I will talk to you guys later.